Hello everyone and welcome to part 7 of this tutorial series for the Phoenix A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator taking you on a full flight from Manchester to Prague. In the previous video, part 6, we looked at planning our arrival into Prague and working out what we were going to do, when we were going to do it and essentially just briefing the arrival. In this video, we're going to show you how to perform what we've briefed in order to give us a safe arrival and landing on Prague's runway 12. If you haven't done so already, I highly recommend that you go back to the start of this series and work through all the video tutorials in sequence. That way you'll understand anything that you may not be familiar with, which I may discuss in this video. So here we are just about to reach our top of descent marker. So obviously we're going to begin the descent as close to this as possible. If however you're flying on uh, on VATSIM or you have some ATC, then obviously you can't just start to descend at that top of descent marker. You have to either request permission or follow ATC uh, instructions. If you're not flying with an ATC, then you're obviously cleared now to begin your descent. What altitude you descend down to is entirely up to you. Of course you can descend as far down as the platform altitude which we've already set up and briefed which here is 4,000 feet. You could descend down to 10,000 feet. What I like to do is check out what the transition altitude is at my destination. So for example the transition altitude here in Prague is 5,000 feet. So I'm going to go and tell my aircraft to descend down to flight level 60, 6,000 feet the reason for that is that I am then going to still stay in standard pressure for the uh, for the time being. I'm not descending down to an altitude which would be uh, 5,000 feet, and I'd need local pressure. So we're still descending to uh, to a flight level. One of the reasons uh, that I like this is because there is a danger, of course, that air traffic control comes on, and if you had got yourself descending down to an altitude. 5,000 feet then you would have to set the local pressure because you're descending down to an altitude below the transition altitude. That's absolutely fine. If air traffic control then came online and said hello please uh, descend to flight level 120. You could wind this up then to level off and make sure you don't go any lower than flight level 120 but forget that you have already set this to the local pressure and perhaps forget to pop that back into, uh, into standard pressure. So it just mitigates that uh, that little danger. You'll have also seen because I actually initiated the descent after our top of descent we were actually a little bit high on the profile so the aircraft needed to catch up. In order to do that of course the aircraft accelerates and targets the top of the magenta speed gates which if I move over we'll be able to see that just here. So it targets the top of the magenta speed gate in order to get down as fast as possible. The danger with that, of course, if it needs to get down rather quickly, is that it may be very close to your maximum operating speed. So in instances like that, the best thing to do is not what I did just there, which was to initiate a managed descent, but it is in fact to initiate either an open descent or even use VS speed. Once that uh, maximum operational speed starts to uh, starts to rise as you bleed away then you can pop it back into managed descent it's just to keep the top of the magenta speed gate away from your maximum operating speed that is obviously not a speed you want to get close to uh, intruding on okay so we're now on our way down and we've already caught up with our uh, pre-planned descent profile as we can see the little green yo-yo is uh, in the center you can also check how far you have deviated by going to the uh, progress page and it tells us that our vertical deviation is only 16 17 feet which is absolutely nothing one thing we need to go ahead and do then of course is enter our destination data a couple of ways we can do this and normally this would be done prior to uh, the descent starting of course I'm just a little late here in uh, this tutorial so you would either go ahead and request a uh, a weather send a weather request off and get the meta or you can kind of cheat a little bit with the uh, wonderful Phoenix tablet that we've got just here we can just have a quick look at the meta for Prague we can update it as well and we can see so let's fill everything we need in just here first thing for the performance page is the Q&H which is going to be 10 
1.14 the temperature is 20 degrees the wind is 160 at 5 knots at transition altitude we've already said it's 5000 we are going to be doing a fully config landing today the VAP speed is 135 VLS 130 and then in the barrel field we need the charts for this so as you saw on the metal just there it's CAV OK great visibility so we're going to be making a normal uh, ILS approach which means that uh, runway visual range is above 750 meters we are legally permitted to start this approach and the decision altitude is going to be 1360 feet for more information on the minimums and what values to uh, read off here for different categories of approach, category 1, 2, 3 and auto lands etc, there is a tutorial on the channel which goes in depth at explaining which values to use for, uh, for those different scenarios. So that is now uh, all set up. All we need to do is carefully sort of monitor our descent all of the way down. Everything should of course fly exactly as, uh, as planned. However, if you're using live air traffic control on something like the VATSIM network, you may be told to level off or deviate, etc. For, uh, for traffic, in which case you're going to need to look at the profile picture yourself and it's your responsibility as the pilot to work out how that profile is looking. One way you can do that is to go to the flight plan page and what's important here is this distance so this is the track mile distance we've got left we have got 86 miles left to fly let's say for example however that ATC gave us a runway change or a more direct route and cut maybe 20 miles off our profile well with 20 miles less to run we need to get down much quicker if we're unable to do that of course then we would have to ask ATC to either enter us into a hold while we lose some altitude or we can uh, ask for some extra track miles to be applied in the tutorial today though however of course we've got no traffic in the sim other than us so we're free to just continue our nice simple route as we've planned in coming into uh, coming into Prague we can see now as well that we've got 6,000 feet shown here on the FCU, that's what we selected, but because we manually entered a constraint a little bit earlier on in the tutorial series, we have got that constraint of flight level 120 shown at Papa Romeo 956. A neat little feature to show you as well, if I leave this in Manage Descent and I select flight level 120, and we just again push for managed you'll see that the aircraft automatically plans a profile to level us off at 120 here where the constraint is this is a really neat little feature so the uh, aircraft knows what constraints it has in the database on your uh, on your routing and if it matches an FCU altitude that you have put in up here it will automatically make sure to target that altitude at that specific point let's just roll that back now down to flight level 60 and we can confirm that we've got flight level 60 once we have passed this the magenta constraint will disappear there and should turn blue showing flight level 60 blue if you are enjoying this tutorial series please don't forget to leave a like and of course hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to the channel turning on the notifications bell as well so you don't miss future video content and live streams any questions regarding the tutorial series please do leave a comment down below and i'll be sure to come back and, uh, and answer as best i can so let's get back to the flight deck so as we've just passed 16,000 feet, we're going to go ahead and secure the cabin, turn the seatbelt signs on. It's at this point that we would run the approach checklist and we're basically just continuing to monitor our arrival, checking that everything is going exactly as we had planned. If we take a look at the routing here on the navigation display, you can see that there could potentially be an option to cut some track mileage. Instead of heading all the way to Papa Romeo 954, what we could do instead is go direct to a waypoint further down the approach path. This may also be something that air traffic control asks you to do, but you need to be able to make sure that you can meet the profile, that 4,000 feet platform that we spoke about a little earlier. 
if ATC is cutting your track mileage, then you're going to have to get down a little bit quicker in order to maintain that platform. And that's where you as the pilot need to be vigilant in knowing whether you can safely accept that shortcut from ATC and still get down in time. You can see at the moment we're just passing 14,000 feet or very close. That means we'd need to lose 10,000 feet. And a good rule of thumb using the rule of threes is 10,000 feet is equivalent to around 30 miles. Well, if we look at the navigation display here, we can see that we would have less than 30 miles in order to reach that. We could potentially do it by speeding up the aircraft and perhaps using some speed brakes. But if I was flying this, I'd ask ATC, perhaps maybe not for a direct, but just to add a few more extra track miles on, because then we could get down safely in time. Remembering, of course, we still need to slow down. So now a little bit further on, you can see we are reaching that uh, 12,000 feet constraint that we added a little while ago. As we pass through this, the aircraft should continue to descend all the way down as we've currently got flight level 60 set, but it will keep us at 12,000 feet until we have passed the constraint at Papa Romeo 956. Here we shall see in a moment there we go flight level six zero so we just continue our descent down to uh to six thousand feet you can also see as well the little blue level off arrow and that shows us where the aircraft thinks we will be at the altitude of six thousand feet if you're happy with that obviously we can go ahead and leave it or you can intervene potentially by setting a vs rate in order to bring this sooner but for now i'm happy to leave this because this looks like everything is going to the plan that we made in the last video as we pass 10,000 feet then, normally I'll get the landing lights on at this point. And 10,000 feet for me also is another great trigger to activate the approach phase. Of course, we don't want to activate the approach phase straight away because if we did, we'd start slowing down to our green dot speed. In order to mitigate this, we can use selected speed. No danger in flying 250 knots. We will continue on the profile that we've already had predetermined. But now, because we are in managed speed, we can activate that approach phase and not start slowing the aircraft down just yet. When we want to start slowing our aircraft down now to the green dot, all we need to do is push for managed speed. The danger with forgetting to activate the approach phase is that you could be on final approach six miles out, you then push for managed speed and the aircraft will suddenly speed up and start targeting 250 knots because that is the level constraint below 10,000 feet. We are still descending to a flight level, so using standard pressure, but there's no danger in going ahead now and setting the local pressure on the standby instrument, just double checking what that was. So let's go ahead now and set that 1014. We've done a good brief, we know exactly how we want to fly the approach, when we want to start slowing the aircraft down, so now it's just a matter of monitoring the track, the profile, everything of the aircraft, of course following ATC instructions if they are available, but for now we look in good shape. We can now go ahead and set a altitude, 4000 feet, that is our platform altitude. We're going to push for managed descent, which means of course remember that we also need to set the Q&H here on the FCU because we're dropping down below the transition altitude and we can see that we're going to level off exactly where we planned at 4,000 feet. So now to continue on track with the brief that we made, I want to start slowing my aircraft down. In order to do that, we will push for managed speed. The approach phase is already activated. So now we'll watch as we continue to descend, but we will also start to bleed off a little bit of airspeed. If you find you're not bleeding off airspeed quick enough, there's two things you can do. You can either pull the speed brakes out, or of course you can push VS and descend at around about a thousand feet per minute. You don't really want to be descending any faster than that or you will not lose speed. My preferred method though in this situation is to use open descent. This way it means now that we will level off because open descent means that our descent rate is based upon the airspeed that we are targeting. So once we've reached green got we'll start to descend again. We can see we're also right on the glide slope, so I want to start configuring our aircraft. We've now just passed 230 knots, which is the maximum speed for flaps 1. So let's pull speed and select flaps 1 along with a speed selection of 180 knots. 180 knots is a great approach speed because this gets us slow enough to be able to get flaps 2 out. Flaps 2 adds a lot of drag to the aircraft, and you need that drag in 
order to go down the glide slope without speeding up. If you're going down the glide slope and you haven't yet got flaps 2 out, sometimes, particularly if you've got a tailwind, you can struggle to keep your aircraft on the glide slope without speeding up. We can see now Lockstar is also available. We'll get the second autopilot turned on. And at the same time there, everything's converged. So we've got Glide Slope Star, we've got Lockstar, and our aircraft is now following the ILS. And we're perfectly aligned on the approach. Flaps too. And if we have a look, there we can see our landing runway. The next thing for me to do then, usually I like to do this between five and six miles out, is we are going to activate manage speed that will start slowing us down even further to our final approach speed we get the landing gear out we arm the spoilers we make sure all the lights are on as well and then it's entirely up to you as the pilot when you want to disconnect that autopilot the absolute minimums for a non auto land is 160 feet personally around a thousand feet that's when I tend to knock it off particularly on a good clear day like this so that is all that is left for us to do so here we go we need to be fully configured for landing by 1000 feet so we've got about 700 feet to go let's get our landing gear down we shall arm the spoilers we will go to the overhead and turn all of our lights on these are also SOP specific as to which ones you actually turn on however and with all my talking I forgot to arm manage speed so let's go ahead and push that now you can see we were actually very close to the uh, maximum flap uh, speed just there but we've got plenty of time we're now fully configured bleeding off airspeed nicely over a thousand feet still to go and all you need to do when you do turn off that autopilot is just try to maintain that scent line obviously the red alt down here lets you know how far away from the ground you are and for a good landing all you need to do is make sure you land on the center line within the touchdown zone and forget about your feet per minute obviously it's nice to have a greaser landing but the main thing is a a safe landing when you hear the radio altimeter call out 30 feet that's the point at which I close the thrust levers and retard those to idle I can then start the flare very very gently you don't want to over flare or you will end up floating the main thing you mustn't do is once you have initiated the flare do not under any circumstances be tempted to push the side stick forward because from around 30 feet anyway the horizontal stabilizer at the back of the aircraft is lowering the aircraft nose on its own and that is to give you the pilot a sort of initiation to and feel to wanting to fly anyway right here we go let's check out the landing today you can see a little bit of wind just uh, caught us off that center line so I just going to get us back there we've got the pappies two whites two red try not to focus on the pappies too much below about 300 feet because they do become unreliable just target the big squares for the landing zone and try and maintain those at the same altitude all the way down in your window there's that center line there's the touchdown zone slight flare hardly anything and then we can just use a tiny bit of rudder if we need to on the rollout just to maintain that center line after touching down we would check that the flaps had deployed we'd got reverse green we were slowing down and we can see decel is shown just here once we're below 70 knots stow the reverses select idle thrust you can then disconnect the auto brakes just simply by selecting the normal braking action of the aircraft whatever key bind you've got that set to the uh, tow brakes essentially and then vacate the runway when it is safe to do so so that concludes this part of the tutorial series it has been quite a big video so anything that you've missed obviously feel free to go back rewind and watch again any questions you may have after that of course do leave a comment down below thank you so much for watching i hope you found this useful if you have please do give it a like and i look forward to seeing you all on the future live streams thanks very much bye bye for now